Electric vehicles with self-driving software is the future of transportation. The question is, which ETFs are best positioned to profit from this trend? On today's ETF battles, we've got ARKQ versus IDRV right after this. Welcome to season two of ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and season one ended on December 21st. And I don't know about you, but I'm way overdue for my ETF Battles fix. And I hope you missed us just as much as we missed you. And we're bringing it on today. So before I tell you about today's matchup, we have a new ETF Battles logo. Tell us how you like it. We've also enhanced some of the sound effects and plus, We've expanded the field of battle matchups to now include mutual funds. So if there's a particular mutual fund versus an ETF that you'd like to see in a matchup, send it to us. Give us those symbols in the comment section below, or you can do that on our Twitter handle, at ETF Guide, and we'll gladly look at it as well as your ETF to ETF battle matchups. Also, be sure to subscribe to ETF Guide TV if you haven't done so already. Besides ETF Battles, we have the Portfolio Report Card and other original content that you will not see anywhere else. So today's arm wrestle is between the ARC Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF as ticket symbol ARKQ versus the iShares Self-Driving EV and Tech ETF as ticket symbol IDRV. Is it pronounced autonomous or autonomous? English majors weigh in. Now, keep in mind, iDrive is index link, whereas RQ is overseen by an active portfolio manager that's trying to outperform the index. So which ETF is the better play on the future of driving? Helping us to judge today's matchup is Dave Krinsis at ETF Portfolio Management and Mike Akins at ETF Action. Judges, it's great to see you again. It's been a while, and we missed you, and I'm so happy to see you guys. Hey, Ron, Mike. Aloha, guys. Hey guys, great to see you. Merry New Year. So the four battle categories are going to be cost, exposure strategy, and performance. And then we've got our mystery battle category where you ju judges get to decide which factor or maybe multiple factors is important in today's matchup. My scorecard, as you can see, is blank. That means it's ready to go and I'm going to fill it out in real time. And we're going to go through each one of these battle categories one at a time cost exposure strategy performance and and the mystery and then we will determine at the end of today's program which of these etfs wins or it could end up in a split decision we'll just have to wait and see so the first category is cost we're going to begin with you dave you've got 30 seconds go well happy 2021 people on cost these aggressive growth thematic etfs charge 0.75 percent for rq and almost half a percent for iDrive. Now, RQ is actively managed and iDrive is passive. And for aggressive growth funds, this cost difference of almost 30 basis points is not material. So I'll call the cost here a split decision. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to you, Mike. Who wins the battle in terms of cost between these two ETFs? I completely agree with my uh, esteemed colleague, Dave, with respect to with these strategies being um, high growth thematic, the expense ratio, um, while you should always know what it is, is very little concern relative to the actual um, exposure and strategy itself. Um, however, I will give the win to ARKQ because it has a higher active share. Um, so not only is it um, actively managed, but you're also getting a higher active share rather to relative to broad based um, benchmarks such as the all country world index. And I think um, that kind of identifies the difference in these strategies. So from a pure cost basis, what you're getting, I'm going to give the, the nod to ARKQ, even though it's more expensive from an expense ratio perspective. All right. That's solid analysis. The next battle category is exposure strategy. So Mike, you're still up. Who wins the battle between these two ETFs? So this is a great matchup in the sense that you have two strategies that are both broadly similar. Um, here at ETF Action, we class them both inside of our thematic composite. And within the thematic composite, underneath the segment of industrial revolution. However, ARC-Q 
um, is a broad-based strategy. It has a very broad mandate with respect to what it can invest into, being autonomous transportation, robotics, automation, 3D printing, energy storage, space exploration, whereas iDrive has a much narrower mandate in that it's looking to invest in self-driving electric vehicles and technologies surrounding that. But then where it gets confusing is despite the broad mandate of ARC, it has a much, it goes about selecting its securities much more like a surgeon. Whereas iDrive has a much narrower mandate, but it owns everything that might qualify. So to give you an example, ARCQ has 41 holdings currently, iDrive has 100. Those 100 companies broadly have something to do with self-driving, but if you were really to drive, dive under the hood, you'd find a lot of names that, you, that you're aware of, like NVIDIA or Apple or whatever it may be. Whereas RK or RQ um, is going to have names like Materialize, which a lot of companies haven't heard of. A lot of people probably haven't even heard of. In fact, it's a 7% weighting in the portfolio, but it's only held in eight other ETFs. So out of you know, 1,500 long only equity ETFs, only eight of them actually own this company. And I think that gives an, a nod to that concept of actively going out and finding companies that are innovative within this space. Um, so from an exposure perspective, um, I'm gonna give it to ARCQ because of that surgeon-like approach to finding companies that meet their definition of this theme. Thank you for that uh, observation and analysis. Next up is a day for the same category, exposure strategy, who wins the battle? For exposure, these two satellite aggressive growth funds both have Tesla as their largest holding and Alphabet in their top 10, but otherwise have little overlap as Mike explained. Overall, I do favor the fully systematic investment process in IDRV, but ARC's broader sector diversification is also attractive. So given these offsets, I call the exposure in this battle another split decision, and we know you love split decisions, Ron. You're making my job that much Who more is difficult. This guy? I know. Come on, man. Pick a pick pick a side. Don't be on the fence. Okay. Next is the performance category. So Dave, you're still up. Who wins the the battle in this category? On performance, over the short 1.7 year period since IDRV's inception through January 11th, 2021, ARCQ strongly outperformed. ARCQ actually returned almost double IDRV, gaining 142% versus 80%. However, at ETFPM, we don't trade either of these thematic ETFs because our satellite aggressive growth allocations have mainly been in leveraged technology ETFs and Bitcoin. That means it's wildcard time. Over the past 5.7 years, since the public quotation of Bitcoin Trust, ARCQ was no match for leverage or Bitcoin. ARCQ returned 357%, while the GOAT ETF, the NASDAQ 100 three times, delivered almost nine times your money. Semiconductor three times, Soxel, did even better, gaining almost 16 times. And the Bitcoin Trust was just unbelievable. GBTC actually returned 80 times your money, which was 22 times the total return of ARCQ. So I give the win on satellite aggressive growth performance to the NASDAQ 100 three times, semiconductor three times, and Bitcoin Trust. And given their absence in this battle, I give the performance win here to ARCQ. Look at that. I think that's a first. Three wildcard winners. I love it. So um, let, let's shift to you, Mike. How do you see it in terms of performance? Uh, who wins the battle between these two ETFs? Well, I, I think it's pretty clear that RQ has um, crushed IDRV um, since, in, since common inception. It's had a fantastic run. All of the ARC portfolios have had a, had a really good run. One thing I would note there is that's looking backwards, um, RQ um, has a has, a, has had a 10% allocation to Tesla. As we all know, Tesla's up 800%. Hey, even better than um, Dave's American Dream portfolios over some of those timeframes. But so a big component of that outperformance can be led to, to Tesla. I think if you look at valuations and if you look at macro level trends looking forward, I actually think there's, there's reason to believe that iDrive might be the better play right now, 
giving a little bit more of its cyclicality, a little bit more of the value name is, believe it or not, down in that consumer discretionary sector, some of the traditional autos, um, just to give you um, by ways of looking at trailing 12 month um, price sales, our Q is trading at 4.3 times, whereas iDrive is trading at 1.41. You can see, get a sense a little bit more of that cyclicality in the names versus the really high growth. Um, so purely, clearly our Q has been the better performer, but going forward, I would not be surprised to see iDrive um, take home the prize in the um, short to medium term future. So I'll give it to iDrive because I think we all recognize um, it's not about what you could have earned, Dave. It's about what you're going to earn in the future. And to that extent, I'm giving the nod to IDRV. Next is the mystery battle category where our judges get to pick one factor or several factors that they feel are important to today's battle. So Mike, you're still up. What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yes, I think the mystery battle here is uh, active versus passive. Um, um, if you have never gone out to uh, Kathy Wooden Team's um, website, um, arcinvest.com uh, and checked out their, their research process, um, it's really impressive. Uh, the way they go about finding companies, defining themes, um, you know, regardless of an investment, which whether or not you invest in their products, ultimately, I highly encourage all of all of your viewers to take a look at their research. It's a great process, and it does clearly highlight the difference between active and passive. And you know, at ETF Action, we don't believe that one is better than the other. It depends on what best aligns with what you're trying to achieve. But in this case, given the matchup of ARC versus the passive iShares, I'm giving my mystery nod to ARC um, for their research process, for their hands-on active approach to being um, a leader in this space right now, and clearly um, identifying some of the disruptive trends that are happening in our marketplace and providing excellent research and making it transparent for all to, to consume. So. You know, hats off to their team and their research process. And for that reason, I will give the mystery category win to the actively managed ARC Q. Excellent. Now, what about you, Dave? What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? You know, Ron, my new mystery category for 2021 is the sharp ratio. Just kidding. Position <laughs> waiting. <laughs> uh, position oh, waiting. That was a good it. one. It's not even April Fool's Day. We're not even close to it. And you, you were giving us some Fool's Day uh, kind of stuff. So thank you for you. that. Position weighting is my mystery category because it's so incredibly important. Now, ETFPM doesn't allocate to RQ or iDrive, but if we did, they would both be eligible for a five to 20% holding. So I call the position weighting category for this battle, another split decision. All right, so now we're going to give our judges their final opportunity to give us their overall battle winner. And Dave, you're still up. So who do you think wins the battle between these two ETFs overall? Well, Ron, to recap this satellite aggressive growth battle, all I can say is holy Bitcoin Batman. The Bitcoin <laughs> trust just returned 80 times your money or 22 times the total return of ARC Q. Soxel delivered almost 16 times and TQQ gained more than double ARC. So for satellite aggressive growth exposure, we favor GBTC, Soxel, and TQQQ. But these securities are far more volatile than unleveraged ETFs. So go slowly, be extra careful with leverage in Bitcoin. And as for this ETF battle, I give the win to ARCQ. All right. Thank you very much. Those are some amazing numbers too. Uh, historical numbers. And of course, we want to remind our audience that past performance is not indicative of the future results. Mike, what is your overall or who is your overall battle winner between these two ETFs? Yeah, just real quick, I think we might have to rename this show Monday Morning Quarterback. Um, <laughs> just I uh, didn't realize we were, we were looking back into the end of the past there. But uh, no, from the perspective of this, this battle, um, I'm going to give it to ARC, um, Autonomous Technology and Robotics ETF, A R. KQ. Um, and I'm going to give it to that because I believe the approach to getting um, more pure names, um, their approach to finding companies within the industrial um, revolution segment, as we classify here at ETF Action, 
um, results in a pure portfolio to those names, that can be good and bad from a volatility perspective. Um, you know, I think short term, a lot of these names inside of the ARC portfolios have had an incredible run and could be extended. But long term, thinking seven, 10, 15 years out, I believe the ARC process for finding companies in this space will deliver superior results. And for that matter, I will give the, re, the win to ARKQ. Um, and for what it's worth, Dave, um, over the last year, ARKQ has a sharp ratio of 2.21 versus SPY and IDRV has 1.31. So it wins in that category as well. All right, very good. Well, the judges have spoken and according to my battle scorecard, RQ is the winner. And my battle scorecard looks like a Jean-Michel Basquiat painting. I mean, it's just scribbled all over the place. You guys made some awesome points. We definitely need to keep our eye on some of these major trends like Bitcoin, as Dave mentioned, but also to Mike's point about active share. I mean, I think that's one of the key takeaways. If you're gonna hire an active manager or portfolio manager, definitely make sure they're not a closet indexer. I mean, why are you gonna pay all those fees to have a closet indexer? What a giant waste of money. So definitely ARC is the antithesis of that. And that's good to see. And also I think the final point is for those of us that are staunch indexers, and you could probably count me among that group, is that indexing wins most of the time, but not all of the time. And there are certainly exceptions to that. And we saw that in today's battle with ARCQ winning over its index counterpart, iDrive. Well, thank you again, judges, for your excellent work. And that does it for this episode of ETF Battles. Be sure to follow our program on Twitter, at ETF Guide. Also subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. And let us know which ETF battles you'd like to see. We also can include into the discussion mutual fund tickers. So if you have any that you'd like us to analyze, include that specific ticker symbol and we'll look at it. Well, thanks again for watching. I'm Rhonda Leggy with ETF Guide TV and watch the battle before you invest. We'll see you next time.